Okay, so this is a weird one. I feel like for the most part, we kind of put to bed the entire conversation about the first overall pick from last year, Montreal Canadiens forward Uri Slavkovsky, because with his season-ending injury off our hands, we had ourselves the finalement, the dénouement, the rise and the fall of Uri Slavkovsky playing NHL hockey in the 22-23 season. He's done for the year, he's no longer going to play, and... Canadians fans have kind of had a lot of time to muster in that idea and just kind of lay it down to rest. Okay, Slavkovsky is done. No biggie. He finishes off his 2022-2023 season with 39 games played, 4 goals, 6 assists, and 10 total points. So roughly a full season's point projection of about 21. Can you do some for me? Okay, no, we're not going to do that here, but Slavkovsky, I know the announcement was that he's out for three months, and that was back in January, but come on, the Canadians are not going to make the playoffs, so for all intents and purposes, we'll just say he's out for the remainder of the season. And when it comes to this just sort of conclusion to everything, it's been there. Everybody knows it, right? So why are we talking about it here in this video today? Well, if you go over to TVA Sports and you look at this article published from, what was it, yesterday's segment of the JIC show, you had yourself some comments made by former Vancouver Canucks forward Antoine Roussel about Yuri Slavkovsky and his development. Now, because this article is in French, I had to translate it to English via the Google machine, I'll leave a link in the description to the original article in French, so if you're are able to understand the language, then you can go ahead and click the link, read it in its original form. But if you translate everything from Francais into Anglais, this is what Antoine Roussel says about Slavkovsky. His development was botched. I sincerely think that Yuri Slavkovsky's development has been botched this year. This is what our collaborator Antoine Roussel launched in the Le Show segment of the JIC show on Tuesday on TVA Sports. According to the former agitator, by the way, I love how they call him that, according to the former agitator, like that's an actual profession that he had, which I'm not going to go out there and disagree, you know, Antoine Roussel was a pest. The Slovaks should not have spent the whole season in Montreal. Roussel believes that decision by GM Kent Hughes hurt Slavkovsky's development. Did we really need to keep him in Montreal? He could have started the season with the Canadians and then gone to the World Juniors. Afterwards, he could have gone back down to the junior ranks or returned to Europe and continued to play in an interesting league, but not necessarily in the National League. As he was the first choice overall, you had no choice but to keep him, replied host Jean-Charles Lajoie. Roussel and Eric Fichaud, also present on the set, do not share this opinion. They replied in chorus, You always have a choice. I also think that would have helped him, added Fichaud. Slavkovsky had 10 points in 39 games before suffering a knee injury in mid-January that ended his first season on the Bettman Tour prematurely. And so, when it comes to the way Roussel is sort of laying it out in this TV segment. He says it pretty much verbatim. He feels that Slavkovsky's development was botched, and that other options proceeded themselves when you had the chance to send Slavkovsky to the World Juniors, and maybe send him away to either Europe or the Junior Leagues after the World Junior period. Kind of go the Shane Wright route with Slavkovsky. Now, of course, we know Wright had a little bit more of a difficult path playing in the NHL, considering he didn't even fulfill the game's play requirement to burn off the first year of that ELC, but the plan that the Seattle Kraken had for Shane Wright worked out pretty well, and we've made a few videos going over just how genius it really was to have Wright play in the NHL, get a little bit of time there, spend enough time out of the lineup to get sent down to the AHL before going over to the World Juniors, dominating, winning the gold, and then heading over to the CHL once more, where he got traded from Kitchener over to Windsor. It was kind of a genius plan, and everything worked out because Wright got his cup of coffee at the NHL, he knew what it was like to play at the top league in the world, but he was also able to expand on the fact that he is a young player who has the opportunity to play at the World Juniors and do all this stuff, and for Yuri Slavkovsky, it wasn't really much of that. We had an entire conversation back in December, January-ish, talking about how Slavkovsky had not really been permitted by the Canadians to play for Team Slovakia at the World Juniors, and how if he had been on the team, things probably would have been a bit different for their outcome in the tournament in general. 
And, you know, I could definitely go back and retrospect and say that we talked about both sides. Like, Slavkovsky in the NHL versus Slavkovsky at the World Juniors. One is the place where he probably is going to be spending the rest of his hockey career, and you want him to stay in those habits. The other is the World Juniors, where you're playing off against players that are not as skilled, not as proficient, and not as well-rounded. So, there was the debate that said that if Slavkovsky played, let's say, two weeks at the World Juniors, he could, in a way, undo some of the progress that he had made with the Canadians. And in theory, it makes sense, but realistically, I mean, looking at what happened after the tournament, I mean, Slavkovsky went on a really bad slump, the entire Canadians went on a slump in that span that the World Juniors was going on, and so you really had to look at it with retrospect and say, yeah, no, with hindsight, it probably was a much better idea to send Slavkovsky to the World Juniors rather than getting zero points in, like, 11 minutes time and ice per game for two weeks with the Canadians. So... There you go. One botch, I guess it's very fair to say that that was a botch. But as for the rest of the season, you could definitely say that if Slavkovsky had been playing in, let's say, the junior leagues, or if he was sent back over to Europe, he might have had, let's just say, a more dominant season after the draft. But at the same time, I mean, it's so rare to see first overall guys not play the full season in the NHL after that even though you could say that Slavkovsky might not have been ready to take on the full task and weight of the NHL on his own at 18 years old, he still looked okay enough to justify keeping him in the lineup, in my opinion. And also, you have to go over the idea that says that the first overall pick is always in the NHL. Pretty much. Even if you go over to the last two guys that didn't play in the NHL right away, Owen Power, Eric Johnson, these guys were both defensemen. It has been a pretty stable pattern that the first overall guy, if he is a forward, he stays and he plays. So, just from the optics, it looks like it probably was a suitable maneuver to keep him in the NHL the entire time, but... I mean, look, with retrospect, sure, he played alright. He definitely was able to tango at the National Hockey League level, but... There is a certain level of shoulda, coulda, woulda when you acknowledge what he could have been able to accomplish at other levels of play, how much confidence he would have been able to get. Let's say if he played at the World Juniors for Team Slovakia, was the top point scorer over there and helped them out go even further than they did in the regular postseason. Or not postseason, but the tournament, excuse me. And you kind of have to think about it like that, which is why Antoine Roussel, of all people, brought it up on the JIC show. So I'll leave a link in the description to the... TV hit. It's on tvasports.ca, I believe it is. Yeah, CA. That's what it is, not tvasports.com. Yeah. And there is indeed the TV segment, the article. It's all linked in the description below. But let me know your thoughts in the comments as to whether or not you feel the Canadians quote unquote botched Uri Slavkovsky's development in year one of his NHL career. Do you agree with Anton Roussel? Do you not agree with his stance? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts and opinions. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.